Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are taking a closer look at how the GeForce RTX 3070 and Radeon RX 6800 compare by benchmarking them head to head in 40 games. Actually with Cyberpunk 2077 sneaking in as a late addition to this benchmark session it's now 41 games. Anyway, lots of games have been tested, more than twice what was included in my day one reviews for each of these models, and here I will be providing 1080p, 1440p and 4K data. But before we get to any of that, experience ultimate performance and get pixel perfect detail with the new MSI Optics MAG274 QRF QD monitor. Race hell in game and soak in a blazing fast 165Hz refresh rate, stunningly quick rapid IPS panel with unrivaled color reproduction that topped our own gaming monitor charts here at Hardware Unboxed, all backed with NVIDIA G Sync compatibility right out of the box. Offering 1440p resolution at 27 inches in size, MSI really has set a new standard for enthusiast gaming monitors. If a gaming monitor could be described as coming close to perfect, this would be it. So learn more about MSI's new Optics MAG274 QRF-QD monitor via the links below. As it stands, availability for both products is pretty terrible, though we are starting to see some things improve here, especially for the RTX 3070. At least locally, where major retailers at the time of making this video have over half a dozen different models in stock. The hope, however, is that early next year, availability for both the 3070 and 6800 will improve to the point where both will be relatively easy to purchase. Should that be the case, today I'm going to find out which one I think you should purchase. So let's get into the testing, and please note that I have updated the GPU test rig for this benchmark, moving away from the Ryzen 9 3950X to the newer 5950X, though I'm sticking with DDR4-3200CL14 dual rank memory for now, as it's quite a bit faster than even DDR4-3800 single rank. Finally, technologies such as SAM, so Smart Access Memory, they've been disabled, and this is always the case unless specified otherwise. Representing the GeForce GPU is the RTX 3070 Founders Edition graphics card, while the Radeon GPU will be represented by AMD's reference card. Both are stock, so no overclocking here. Now, I'm not going to go over all 41 graphs here. We'll individually take a look at around half a dozen of the games tested, and then we'll jump into some breakdown graphs to quickly summarize all the data. Please note all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members, though I am likely to show those towards the end of the video. Anyway, let's get to it. And we'll start by looking at Battlefield 5. And this is a title that we've tested with a lot in the past, but recently I have dropped it from our battery of benchmarks. And that's mostly due to EA's stupid 5 hardware change lockout, which makes testing more than a few graphics cards an absolute nightmare. And I'm just sick of buying every game on the Origin store 5 times. So in future, we will limit EA titles to these sort of head-to-head -head comparisons, where we look at just 2 or 3 graphics cards. Also, please note that previously I have tested Battlefield 5 using the DirectX 12 API, but many of you are still reporting frame time issues, claiming that DirectX 11 is much smoother, so that's what I've used for this test. And here we're seeing that for those of you targeting maximum FPS at 1080p while maintaining high image quality, the RX 6800 will offer a little over 30% more frames. The margin at 1440p remains much the same. Here the Radeon GPU was 32% faster on average, hitting 173 FPS. However, as we move to the highest resolution tested, so 4K, the margin is reduced to 20%, which is still a sizable victory for the red team, but not quite as extreme as what we saw at those lower resolutions. Still, it's worth noting that at the MSRP, the 6800 does cost 16% more, so the margin isn't quite as impressive as it first appears. Therefore, as we wade through the rest of the graphs, keep that pricing discrepancy in mind. Moving to Hitman 2, we find that the Radeon RX 6800 is a lot less impressive in this title, and although it does still manage to beat the RTX 3070 at all three tester resolutions, the margins are less than the price premium. For example, at 1080p, the Radeon GPU was 4% faster, 5% faster at 1440p, and 11% faster at 4K. So as the resolution scales up and we become more GPU bound, the 6800 does perform better, but still, even the 11% margin at 4K isn't terribly impressive, again, given that 16% increase in price. Where we are seeing impressive margins for the Radeon GPU is Borderlands 3. Here the 6800 beat the 3070 by a 27% margin at 1080p and 1440p, averaging 128 and 95 FPS respectively using the ultra quality preset. Then at 4K, the 6800 leads the 3070 by a 23% margin, pushing up to 54 FPS on average from 44 FPS, so a solid performance uplift there. 
Next up, we're taking a look at performance in Fortnite, a game that not that long ago Radeon GPUs didn't perform particularly well in. AMD did focus on fixing performance in this title, and as you can see, the RX 6800 is very competitive, beating the 3070 by a 17% margin at 1080p, 20% at 1440p, and 21% at 4K. Though, as mentioned earlier, those margins hardly make the GeForce GPU a poor value choice. Another Battle Royale style game that I've tested with is Apex Legends, and here we're looking at very similar performance with either GPU. The RX 6800 was just 6% faster at 1080p, 3% faster at 1440p, and back up to 5% faster at 4K. Basically, with a 3 to 6% performance advantage for the 6800, we really are looking at similar performance at all three tested resolutions. Then we have PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and this is another game, a bit like Fortnite, where AMD has historically done quite poorly. The results here aren't bad, but again, given the 6800 is fetching a price premium, seeing it only match the RTX 3070 isn't a particularly great result. Basically, we're looking at identical performance at all three tested resolutions. Moving on from the Battle Royale games, we have a little known title called Cyberpunk 2077. Maybe you've heard of it. Anyway, at 1080p we find that the 6800 is 8% faster, and then 10% faster at 1440p, while we're looking at an identical 34fps on average at 4K. Now, you can enable DLSS with the RTX 3070 for even greater performance, and we'll talk more about that later on in the video. Next up we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and here the RX 6800 appears to offer a very strong performance uplift over the RTX 3070. We're looking at around a 20% performance boost at all three tester resolutions, so resolution scaling between these two GPUs is very consistent. And that means with the 6800 costing around 16% more, but delivering about 20% more performance, it is a better value choice here, though not by a meaningful margin it has to be said. The Witcher 3 is a game that I've benchmarked with a lot in the past, but more recently I have dumped it for benchmark content with a smaller sample of games. After all, it is five years old at this point. However, we have included it here, and with the visual quality settings all maxed out, the 6800 was 13% faster at 1080p, 6% faster at 1440p, and just 4% faster at 4K. So again, we're seeing a situation where AMD does win across the board, but the margins fail to offset the price premium. Control is yet another game where these AMD and NVIDIA GPUs are very evenly matched. The 6800 was just 6% faster at 1080p, and then we're looking at identical performance, or near enough, at 1440p and 4K. It's also worth mentioning that this is another title that does support DLSS, so you can easily boost the performance of the RTX 3070. But again, we'll talk about that a bit later on in the video. For benchmarking with Red Dead Redemption 2, I tested in-game, so I didn't use the built-in benchmark, and as you can see, the RX 6800 was 14% faster at 1080p, though I do wonder if we're running into some kind of system limitation here that's not GPU-related, as the margin opens up quite considerably at 1440p. Here, the 6800 was 23% faster, but at 4K, things close right back up to just a 10% margin in favour of the Radeon GPU, though that's not uncommon to see, as the Ampere architecture is often better utilised at higher resolutions. AMD's RX 6800 struggles in the outer worlds, and while performance isn't bad by any means, it's just not what we've typically come to expect where the 6800 beats the RTX 3070. Here it's at best able to match the GeForce GPU. Historically this hasn't been a great title for AMD though, so these results shouldn't surprise anyone. Now, it wasn't all smooth sailing with the Radeon RX 6800. I did run into a few titles where performance wasn't uh, quite where you'd expect it to be, Warhammer Vermintide 2 being one example. Now, the game did play perfectly well with over 100 FPS at all times at 1080p, and you could say performance was excellent in that regard. However, relative to the RTX 3070, it was kind of terrible, dropping behind the GeForce GPU by a 24% margin. I'm not quite sure what the issue is here. I did reach out to AMD many weeks ago now, as this wasn't the only game to exhibit strange performance, but so far it seems unlikely that this will be addressed given that the game is quite old now and the fact that the game still works. Still, I felt it was important to include this data as it shows AMD hasn't had the time or resources to optimize for everything. By the time we hit the 4K resolution, the 6800 is roughly on par with the 3070, so it's really only the 1440p and 1080p performance that is of concern. 
Another game that saw performance issues with the RX 6800 was World of Tanks. Again, performance overall was still very good and well beyond what you need to take full advantage of, say, a 144Hz monitor, but it was also well down on the RTX 3070, at least when looking at the 1080p and 1440p data. And a game that is very broken in terms of performance with the Radeon GPU is Kingdom Come Deliverance. And apparently this is a big issue for all games that use the Crytek game engine. Again, I notified AMD of this issue weeks ago, but so far a fix is yet to surface. Again, the 6800 matched the 3070 at 4K, but the 1080p and 1440p performance is pretty horrible in my opinion, and I much prefer the experience with the GeForce GPU. So this is something AMD really does need to address in my opinion. Okay, so some very mixed data there. Depending on the game used for testing, the Radeon RX 6800 can either look like a hero or a massive dud. And so far we've looked at 15 of the 41 games tested, so I think it's time that we have a look at how the RTX 3017 RX 6800 stack up across all 41 games. Starting with the 1440p data, we see that overall the RX 6800 is just 11% faster on average, which is slightly lower than the 14% win it enjoyed in our day one review, featuring 18 games. Of course, that review didn't include titles such as Kingdom Come Deliverance, World of Tanks, Warhammer Vermintide 2, and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, for example. Now, if we remove those titles, the RX 6800 is 14% faster than the RTX 3070, not a massive difference overall, but it clearly explains why the margin is less favorable here when compared to my day one review. Where the RX 6800 did exceptionally well was in Dirt 5, Battlefield 5, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Borderlands 3, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Project Cars 3, and about half a dozen or so other titles. Now, moving to 4K does reduce the performance deficit for the RX 6800 seen in titles such as Kingdom Come Deliverance, and we end up with just over half a dozen games where the performance was even. Overall, the margin is much the same, changing from 11% in favour of the Radeon GPU at 1440p to 10% at 4K. So while the 6800 is clearly faster overall, it's not necessarily better value. Okay, so we've now got a very good idea of how the Radeon RX 6800 and GeForce RTX 3070 compare across a huge number of games. Now the question is, which one should you buy? Well, that is when there is stock available. I was quite impressed with the Radeon RX 6800 in my day one review and felt that it would be my go-to option for around $600 US or less. And despite the few hiccups that we saw in this testing, I am mostly still leaning that way. That said, there is a lot to talk about, and depending on your preferences, one may be better than the other. AMD did have the chance to make this a very easy decision, but they kind of messed up with the pricing. Though, having said that, they are also in a position where they can pretty much, well, they can quickly sell anything and everything they can produce. So given that, it is quite difficult to claim that they've messed up on pricing. Still, if we put all the supply constraints and all that stuff aside for a moment, I think had the RX 6800 come in at $500 US rather than $580 US, it would have been the much more obvious choice for gamers. I think charging a premium for the RX 6800 might prove to be a mistake long term, though AMD can always adjust pricing down the track. In my opinion, without a DLSS competitor and weaker ray tracing performance, it is hard to justify the premium and sketchy performance seen in some of the older titles doesn't really scream premium product to me. As it stands, in terms of cost per frame, they're both very similar, so things like the more mature ray tracing support and DLSS might make the RTX 3070 more appealing to you, again, depending on your preferences there. Also, if you're into streaming and wish to use your GPU for all the heavy lifting, then right now the RTX 3070 is the obvious choice, given AMD's poor encoding support, something they really should have addressed by this point. Now, as we move on to discuss the pros and cons of each GPU, I will cycle through all the graphs that we're yet to look at, or at least as many as I can fit in here, but I won't comment on the results. So the big win as I see it for the RX 6800 is the VRAM buffer. With 16 gigabytes of memory, you're getting twice as much VRAM, and that's almost certainly gonna be a benefit in the not too distant future. And we've already got a number of examples where the RTX 3070 is hamstrung by its eight gigabyte VRAM buffer. Doom Eternal using the Ultra Nightmare preset is one example. Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing enabled is another, and there will be more to come shortly. 
Of course, you can dial down the textures to get around a VRAM limitation, but that kind of goes against the reason for buying an RTX 3070 if it's for the more mature ray tracing support. It makes little sense to enhance stuff like reflections, for example, at a massive hit to performance while also having to downgrade texture quality, something that typically has no impact on performance should you have enough VRAM. So that's really my main concern with the RTX 3070. In two years or so, the RX 6800 could very well end up delivering better image quality in the latest and greatest games, simply because it can take advantage of massive texture packs. All of that said, if you upgrade your graphics card every year or two, the VRAM capacity thing probably won't be something worth worrying about. However, if you typically wait three to four years before upgrading, then I feel the extra VRAM will be a major factor. Though, again, it also depends on the games you play and how heavily you prioritize stuff like high quality textures, as an example. Future predictions aside though, if you care about ray tracing performance right now, the RTX 3070 is a much better option than the RX 6800. Though it's also worth noting that right now there are very few games where we believe enabling ray tracing on the RTX 3070 even makes sense. Games like Control, Watch Dogs Legion, Cyberpunk 2077, and I guess Minecraft. But beyond that, we don't see it as being something you'd really want to use in a Fortnite style game, Call of Duty or Battlefield 5 for example, it's just not well suited for fast paced shooters. On the other hand, support for DLSS is much better in our opinion, as you'll almost always want to enable DLSS 2.0 in any game that supports it. So this is something you'd likely enable in Fortnite for example. That said, DLSS would be much easier to test if it was just an option that you could simply toggle on and it worked in all of your games. But because the game support list is so limited and the effectiveness and image quality is game dependent, you can't really make any generalized conclusions about DLSS. How useful this technology is isn't just game dependent, but also resolution dependent, and this makes providing benchmark numbers quite difficult. Typically, we have seen a lot of reviewers who are evaluating DLSS in games like Cyberpunk 2077 do so with an RTX 3080 or 3090 at 4K, and this is by far the best way to showcase the technology. And this is because as you lower the resolution, even to 1440p, the image becomes a lot blurrier as DLSS has less data to work with. And at 1080p, even in Cyberpunk 2077, using the quality DLSS option, it's not really that great. In our opinion, it is noticeably worse than native 1080p. So showing DLSS FPS performance in a game like Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, 1440p and 4K while using the 4K resolution for the image quality comparisons can be a little bit misleading, as the quality can and does often vary quite a bit, becoming much softer at the lower resolutions as I just mentioned. All of that said, DLSS is a strong selling point for the Ampere GPUs, and it's something AMD will need to counter. So in my opinion, if you know you'll be primarily playing games that do support DLSS, then I feel the RTX 3070 will be the better choice, and this technology does also help alleviate VRAM restrictions. As a side note, although I didn't include overclocking here, as I find those numbers can often be quite misleading, generally speaking though, it does appear as though you will see a much bigger performance boost through overclocking with an RX 6800. But it's also entirely silicon dependent, so your mileage may vary here, which is why I haven't pushed the overclocking angle. I realize this conclusion has been quite long-winded, but some people, they seem to take just snippets of our thoughts on these topics, and without the full context, they come away with the wrong conclusions. I also realize that the vast majority of you get what we're saying, and you, you listen to all of our thoughts, so it probably doesn't make sense to explain anything uh, further than we have, but also I feel like making the explanation as clear as possible, that also doesn't hurt. With new technologies like ray tracing and DLSS, it is harder than ever to make a concise GPU recommendation, but hopefully the testing here has helped you narrow down your choice between the GeForce RTX 3070 and a Radeon RX 6800. And if it did, please hit that like button. And that is going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed all the work that went into this one. And if you'd like to become more involved with the Harbour Unboxed channel, become a Harbour Unboxed community member, you can join us over on Floatplane or Patreon, and that will get you access to our exclusive Discord chat for Harbour Unboxed community members, uh, access to the monthly live stream with two of myself where we answer your questions and talk about the 
whatever's happened that month, there's usually quite a bit to talk about by the end of the month. Uh, there is be behind the scenes videos. I'm currently building a new studio, much, much bigger than the one I currently have. So I'm filming that and showing you guys the progress of that coming along. Hopefully I'll be in there in a few months time, but there's other behind the scenes content as well. Tim talks about monitor testing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what else we got? Q&A stuff. I don't know. There's a whole heap of stuff. Check it out. The links for that in the are in the video description. But if you're not interested, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this rather long video about two GPUs. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.